what the Lord is speaking to us as a body of Christ. He's saying to you, I want you to have understanding. I want you to repent so that I can give you the skill of understanding so that you can redeem the time. So that you don't have to wait the full time, but you can actually go into your next season, even two or three years before the time. Because that's what happened uh, with Daniel. Good day, family. Today, I want to talk to you about three foundational stones that you need in your life if you want to be successful. I think this is very important and I might step on one or two people's toes uh, because uh, it's difficult to align yourself with God's plan. But if you want to be successful, I believe these things, three things that I'm going to uh, share with you today is going to really help you. Now, before we get into this, I just want to tell you that you are a winner and uh, it's important for us when we go into life to not have these negative thoughts that comes against us that makes us feel like we are losers. So before I get into the teaching about the three foundations that we need in our life for success, I want us to make a declaration and I want to invite you to declare with me. Number one, I am a winner. Say it with me. I am a winner. Number two, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Number three, I am created in the image of God. I am created in the image of God. Number four, I am intelligent, brilliant, and one of a kind. I am intelligent, brilliant, and one of a kind. Let's say, I walk in honor. I walk in honor. I hear and obey the voice of God. I hear and obey the voice of God. I have skills and understanding. I have skills and understanding. I am like a tree planted by rivers of living water. I am like a tree planted by rivers of living water. I am part of the family of God. I am part of the family of God. I am part of the winning team. I am part of the winning team. I always win because God is with me. I always win because God is with me. And then finally, I was born to win. I was born to win. In about a month from now, it is time for the new Olympic Games to start. And that Olympic Games is going to be for about three weeks. Uh, where athletes are going to come from all over the world and they're going to compete each other for gold medals. And of course, there's teams, you know, the USA have a team, uh, uh, South Africa have a team, England have a team. And so as all these teams compete against each other, they're going to see who gets the most gold medals. Now, each one of those uh, uh, athletes, uh, they went through four years of training exercise they've got a coach that helped them with their diet with their stamina with their skills their performance uh, each one of those athletes also have a mental coach that helped them to have the right mindset and then of course there's a lot of strategy involved when you compete in the olympic games all right and so the combination of four years of hard work is all coming together now over this next month to see who is going to win those sought after gold medals you know? uh, but that doesn't come uh, just because they showed up and they had the gifting it's because they had the gifting but they also add to that gifting all of these disciplines to get them to the place where they can win now the lord is saying to you and to me that we are his children and that he has called us to win and we are on this earth for a period of time and the Lord wants us to also win the prize. And so just like those uh, um, Olympic athletes had to prepare and they had to add to their skills, all of these disciplines. So the Lord is also saying, I've given you skills, I've given you talents, and I want you to add disciplines to your life so that you can win. Now, when we look in the spirit at some Christians, they look like they got their hands tied behind their back. It looked like they got... Um, you know, um, plugs into their ears, they can't hear anything, uh, they got uh, a mask over their eyes, they're completely veiled, they can't see where they're going, and they are in this race. 
so they don't know, they don't know which direction to, to run. They can't hear the voice of God. Their hands are tight. They can't protect themselves. They can't work. They can't give. They can't function. And so because people walk in dishonor, they can't hear the voice of God, so they're disobedient to the Lord and they have no vision for their lives. They go nowhere. And so the scripture says very clearly, when we have no vision, we perish. And in essence, they perish. And so today, I want to share with you three foundational stones to put you in a position where you can actually flourish. And the first one is that the Lord wants us to walk in honor. And I've seen it many, many times. When someone makes a decision to walk outside of God's boundaries of honor, then delays come into their lives, the blessing of God stops in their lives, and they struggle. The moment they get back into honor and they start to walk in honor, then the Lord's blessing is upon them, there's a flow, there's a harvest, and all the delays in their lives are broken. And they see a, a flow like a river of the goodness and of the opportunities that the Lord gives them. Now I want to read you uh, three scriptures about honor. The first one starts in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12. It says there, God will bless all the work of your hand. All right? So when your hands work, God will bless your hands and he will bless that work. And then in Ephesians chapter 4, 28, it says there, let him work with his hands that he may have something to give. All right? So the, when your hands work, the Lord bless the work of your hands. And also, the function of working is so that we can have something to give. And then in Ephesians 6.3, it says there, Honor your father and your mother, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on this earth. And how do we honor our father and our mother? As we help them, we obey them, we give to them. And of course, the scripture talk about honoring leaders, honoring God, honoring the elders in the church. And so when we walk in honor, and when our hands work, and our hands give, then the blessing of God is on our lives. So that's for me the first one. And that's why I said in the beginning, when you look at the athlete, you know, let's say you see a sprinter, but his hands are tied behind his back and he can't use his hands. His hands are not blessed. Then he won't really be able to run very fast because a sprinter really uses his arms and his hands uh, to run also. Or you would not think of it like that, but that's a very important part of running. Now, I felt that the Lord says, for you to be successful, your hands need to work and you need to walk in honor. And one of the ways how you walk in honor is you need your hands because your hands is going to help you to generate income, to give, to help, to serve, to touch and to show honor in the lives of people. All right, that was foundational stone number one. And that is to walk in honor. All right, now the second one um, has to do with spe specifically your ears. And that is to hear the voice of God and to obey him. You know, when Jesus was speaking to his disciples, he said to them in John chapter 10, 27, he said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. All right. So, first, the sheep hear the voice of God. Then God knows them. So there's, there's relationship. And then it says, and they follow me. So they hear and they follow. So it's hear and obey. They see and they hear what God is doing. And then they obey, they take action in faith, in obedience, under the Lordship of Jesus, and that causes them to prosper. Um, uh, uh, in Luke chapter 11, 20, Jesus says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Uh, and he doesn't just say this person will be successful. He takes it to the next level. He says they are blessed. That means the provision of God the, the favor of God, the protection of God is on the life of someone that hear the word of God and obeys it. All right, so it's so important. Uh, I want to read you another one. Matthew chapter 7, 24. Jesus said, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and he did not fall for it was founded on the rock. Okay, so in this parable, Jesus gives us two examples. One person built on a rock. Of course, the other one built on the sand. Uh, the storms and the winds came, and the one built on the rock stood. But now we want to ask the question, but what, what does it mean to build on the rock? And he explains it. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, that means you hear the word of God and does them, 
is liken him to a wise man. All right. So in other words, the person that hear the word of God and obey the word of God, he does the word of God. That is the person that is building on the rock. And so therefore the second foundational stone in your life is to hear God's voice and to obey it. And to hear God's voice, it means you're going to have to take out all the other voices that's in your head. Maybe you, you like to listen to 10 things. You need to kind of turn the volume down on all of those voices. And then make time, sit before the Lord, pray, and listen to what He says. Write down what He says. And then obey what He spoke to you. If you can do that, then you have put into place in your life the second foundational stone for you to be successful. All right? So the first one is honor, and the second one is to hear and obey. And so now I want to go to the third foundational stone. And I want to read you uh, this verse in uh, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. All right? um, I remember the story of um, Solomon. He, he prayed, uh, and the Lord came to him and said to him, you know, you can name anything that you want, and I'll give it to you. Uh, and Solomon said to the Lord, Lord, I want understanding. And so the Lord gave him understanding, and he gave him wisdom. <clears throat> and because he had understanding and wisdom, he also then received from the Lord a vision of what to do. And so the moment he received a vision of what to do, Solomon could take actions that would move Israel in the right direction for prosperity and peace to come to them as a nation. All right? uh, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, uh, John writes that he says, The Son of God has come and has given us understanding. Okay, So the understanding is actually to understand where I'm going, what I need to do, to understand the vision, to understand the instructions that God gave me, and also to understand not just this very moment, but to understand the timeline that I am on. And so, but it's, he, he says it interesting. He says, the Son of God has come and He's given us understanding. So who gives us understanding? It's Jesus. Um, and, and that is confirmed uh, by many other scriptures that talks about Jesus as the Lord. Now, when we say Jesus is our Lord, that means He gets to make the decision and we get to obey. That's what Lordship means. <clears throat> In Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, we read there, um, Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. He has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. Now, there is a scroll written about your life where God wants to take you. And so, who is the one that opens up the scroll? So, the scroll, there, there is your scroll. This is what God has written for you. That's the vision He has for you. And you need understanding to know, but what do I need to do in my life? The scripture is very clear. The only one that can open up that scroll and loosen its seals is the line of the tribe of Judah, and that is Jesus. And so when you come to Jesus and you say to Jesus, Jesus, I come before you, I surrender underneath your Lordship. Lord, speak to me. What do you want me to do? The moment you position yourself and you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, He will start to lift you up. He will loosen those seals and He will reveal to you. He will give you understanding. Now, I want to... I want you to think about that whole idea to say the third foundation that I need in my life is understanding and specifically understanding about the future. And I want to do a quick Bible study with you out of the book of Daniel and then we'll also look in the book of Exodus. I want to read from Daniel chapter 9 uh, and it starts there in Daniel chapter 9 uh, and it gives us the time and that was the first year of uh, Darius and he was the son of Asaurus. Now, you have to understand now, because we know what the year is, we can actually do a calculation and know where on the timeline of Israel we are. The Israelites disobeyed the Lord and they went into exile to Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah prophesied and said they will be in exile for 70 years and then they will return back to Jerusalem. Now, if you count the years up, you'll see this is now the 67th year from the time they went into exile. And so now in Daniel chapter 9, we see now what happened with Daniel on the 67th year. You understand now this three years before uh, the prophecy of Jeremiah is, for, is to be fulfilled. So we read here, In the first year of Darius, the son of Asaurus, of the lineage of Medes, 
who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Verse 3, Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make request by prayer and sanctifications with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession. All right. So this is three years before the 70 year period is over here. And, and Daniel, he had understanding. And it says here, I, Daniel, understood by the books the numbers of the years. All right. So what's amazing here, Daniel says here, he had understanding. And the understanding come because he was reading the books. So you can understand, Daniel was reading the book of Jeremiah. And he saw the prophecy that Dan Jeremiah gave that they would be in exile for 70 years. And he understand also that they've been on, in exile for 67 years. Okay, So it's very important to realize Daniel was a person in the nation of Israel that was busy figuring out where are we going to go. And he did that before he started praying. A lot of times we want to pray, but we pray without understanding. Then we don't know what to pray. So before he prayed, he first read the books. He first got understanding and he understood. We are now in year 67. There's a prophecy that says by 70 years, Israel will come out of exile and be able to go back to Jerusalem. And he wanted to repent before the Lord to make sure that is possible. Now I want to go over now to Daniel chapter 9, 21. So it says there, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, who I had seen in a vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. Okay, so the, the angel Gabriel is coming to Daniel. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I've now come forth to give you skill to understand. Okay, so Daniel from the books received understanding. He understood they needed to get out of exile and move back to Jerusalem. He had the understanding to know what to pray, so he interceded before the Lord and he repented. When he repented before the Lord, the Lord says, Yes, now you've shown understanding, you've shown vision, you've shown your willingness to repent, and now I'm taking you to the next level. He sent the angel Gabriel to Daniel and he said to him, I will give you the skill to understand. That's the next level of understanding. The first, he got understanding by reading the books. The second level is he received understanding, uh, but it was the skill to understand, and that was a gift that was given out of the realm of the Spirit to Daniel. If you then follow the history, you'll see in that next year, the, the Israelites started to uh, return back to Jerusalem. So because Daniel had understanding, and there was a prophetic word that says they will go back after 70 years, because of understanding, he could actually expedite the fulfillment of prophecy. And so at year, year 68, they actually already started returning to Jerusalem. Now the ones that returned first, they were the forerunners. And then of course year 69, more people returned. And year 70, more people returned. And there was even some latecomers that returned even later. All right? But the ones that went first were the ones with understanding. And so what the Lord is speaking to us as a body of Christ, he's saying to you, I want you to have understanding. I want you to repent so that I can give you the skill of understanding so that you can redeem the time. So that you don't have to wait the full time, but you can actually go into your next season, even two or three years before the time. Because that's what happened uh, with Daniel. Okay. Now I want to give you another example uh, in the scripture that's kind of like... Um, uh, opposite uh, example and this is uh, the story of uh, Abraham uh, and the Israelites so in Genesis chapter 15 verse 13 the Lord is speaking to Abraham and he says then the Lord said to Abraham know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs where they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years okay so 
the Lord is speaking to Abraham. And the Lord is saying to Abraham, Abraham, you and your descendants are going to be, uh, or your descendants are going to go to Egypt and they're going to be slaves there and they're going to be their slaves for 400 years. Now, what's interesting about that scripture, this was not a prophet that was speaking it. This was God directly speaking those words with Abraham. Of course, the, the Israelites, uh, we know the story about they went into slavery and the Lord brought forth Moses and then Moses led the Israelites out of captivity, uh, out of Egypt. Okay? And then in Exodus chapter 12, verse 40, we read there, Now the sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was 430 years. Okay, so now this is a, this is a problem because God himself said to Moses, the children of Israel will be in Egypt for 400 years. But now when you read here in Exodus 12, 40, it says there, but they were there for 430 years. Now, why is there a 30 year extra? Um, do you think God missed it? So it's not a prophet that could make a mistake, maybe. Uh, this is God himself spoke it. So, so what happened? For what reason? Were they there longer than God said they have to be there? Uh, and I want to read you why um, that extra 30 years was added. Um, I want to read in uh, Acts chapter 7 verse 22. Um, and this is the sermon that Stephen was given. And it says there, um, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and deed. Right? So the Lord took Moses uh, Moses uh, was to be a deliverer and a prophet for the children of Israel and so the Lord made sure that Moses had a good education now if we think back about Daniel how did Daniel have first understanding he got the understanding through reading the books and he was specifically reading the word of God in the book of Jeremiah now how did Moses get understanding Moses got understanding also through education and then it says there in verse 23, Now when he was 40 years old, and it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. So Moses, he became 40 years old, and when he was 40 years old, he started to have an understanding that the Lord has called him to be a deliverer. And so what he did, he walked out of the palace where he was, and he walked over to uh, the land where the Israelites were, it's called Goshen. He went to that area, and that's of course also where the Israelites were oppressed and where they were making the bricks. And so Moses walked to that place and he wanted to go and meet the brethren. Uh, I don't know how he saw it play out in his head, but he, he knew he needed to position himself uh, to be uh, the deliverer. Now, what's interesting, when you go in and you uh, uh, take the time, you'll notice uh, that this moment when Moses turned 40 years old, uh, that was 390 years uh, since the Israelites became slaves in Egypt. So that means it was about 10 years before the 400 year prophecy of God was finished, was completed. That was the time when Moses turned 40. And he wanted to go and talk to the Israelites. I don't, I don't know if he knew the prophecy about the 400 years, but he understood that the Lord has called him to be a deliverer. And so there was 10 years really available for Moses to bring the people out of Egypt. Now, let's continue reading what it says. Uh, so it says, When he was 40 years old, it, uh, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defeated and avenged him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. For he supposed that his brethren would understand that God would deliver them by his hand. But they did not understand. So, Moses, he killed this Egyptian, he put the Egyptian in the sand, and he, he thought that the Israelite was raising Moses up to be a deliverer for the children of Israel. Okay? Uh, but Stephen says here in Acts chapter 7, 25, the children of Israel didn't understand. And then what, had, what happened, Moses had to flee for his life, and he had to wait until his uh, stepfather died, and then once his stepfather died, he could return back to Egypt. And that was 40 years later. So at that time, now they went over the 400 year mark that the Lord promised. 
and now they had 430 years and then at that moment then um, Moses went to Pharaoh and he said let my people go so in the example of Daniel Daniel had understanding first understanding from books then he understood to repent then he received um, the skill of understanding from the angel Gabriel and the result was that the whole of is the Israelites went out of slavery about three to two years before the time set by the Lord now in the event of Moses the people of Israel didn't have understanding they didn't recognize who their deliverer was okay? uh, and they could have probably already been out of Israel before the 400 years uh, out of Egypt before the 400 years was over but it took them an extra 30 years and that was a severe 30 years because when you read in Exodus you can see how fear actually made it worse for the children of Israel um, at that time and he you know he doubled the amount of bricks that they had to make he doubled uh, the amount of suffering that they had in their lives so it was a very hard three, uh, 30 years that came to them because they had no understanding right? and so I was praying about Lord, what can we do? What do we need in our lives for success? And the Lord said to me, honor, obedience, and understanding. And so then I came to these scriptures and I could see what is the detrimental effect. If we walk in honor, if we walk in obedience, but we don't have understanding in our lives. And that's why that scripture in Proverbs says that we will perish if we don't have vision for our lives. Okay, now, I want to just quickly talk to you about an uh, example in my own life. So, in 1998, uh, I went on my knees before the Lord and I said to the Lord, Lord, I will work for you. Uh, I surrendered my life. I um, even said to the Lord that I don't care where I am, what I do, what my family looks like, as long as I can serve you. I had a desire to be married and have children, uh, as is normal, um, but I was even willing to lay that down before the Lord. And so we went on a youth camp, and I ministered also at this youth camp, and when I came home, I was sleeping in my bed, and I was very, very tired. We didn't sleep a lot on the youth camp, and I was lying there, and although I was so tired, I couldn't fall asleep. And I was also thinking about all the the surrendering and the prayers and the promises I made to the Lord and I felt someone walk into the room so I kind of looked but I couldn't see anybody with my physical eyes and I closed my eyes but I felt someone was standing by my bed and I wasn't sure is this now Jesus coming to me or is it an angel and then that being of light and I kind of kept my eyes closed because I was also uh, fearful said to me that I have called you to work for me and I said yes Lord and he said to me I will give you a wife and I will give you a children and I will use you in ministry that's what the, the angel said to me and then the angel said something very interesting he said to me that this is how you will know that this is your wife her name will be Claire now at that stage I really never met anybody in my life other than one person with the name Claire um, I don't know anybody with the name Claire um, it's, it's not necessarily a very common uh, name um, in the area where I lived and but I got this word and so the next day I went to my mother my father and I told them what happened this angel called me uh, it could have been Jesus I wasn't sure and said to me that I've called you into ministry and you're going to have a wife and children, and the wife's name will be Claire. And so my mom was intrigued by it, because she said to me, but uh, do you know anybody with a name Claire? Who is Claire, you know? Um, and she was very excited, because uh, not one of her sons, she had three sons, and not one of them had a, a girlfriend or anything like that. Um, and I said to my mom, I don't know anybody with a name Claire. And that was in October 1998. So in February 1999, I went to Roma Bible School and I was studying there at the school and I worked during the day and I did Bible school in the evenings. And so as I was sitting at the class, uh, there was a break and um, some of the people were walking in and out of the classroom. It's quite a big class. And so 
then Claire and another girl, Natalie, walked past. Now, I didn't know it was Claire. I didn't know her name. I just saw her. And the moment I saw her, the Holy Spirit said in my heart, that is your wife. So, I don't know her, and I wasn't sure how to introduce myself to her, but I knew Natalie. So I went to Natalie and I asked Natalie, Natalie, who is that girl that you were speaking to? And then Natalie said, oh, that's uh, one of the new students. Her name is Claire. So the moment Nat Natalie said, her name is Claire, then I remembered what the angel told me, but you're going to meet someone and her name is going to be Claire. And also the Holy Spirit said to me, that's your wife. And so suddenly I had the confirmation and I knew without a shadow of doubt that this is my wife. And I haven't even spoken to her once. I, I did speak a few times with her, but I, I couldn't get our relationship really to go to the next level because I went to America to go and study at Christian International with Bill Hammond and to be part of the ministry team. And so while I was there in America, that was now October of 1999, I bought one of those um, phone card thingies and I phoned Claire uh, and I, I tried to now over the phone build a little bit of a relationship with her. So I phoned her about once every week and uh, the phone cards was not very long so I could usually only speak about five minutes with her. Uh, but about the third time when I phoned her in October, I asked her if she would marry me. Now of course she was shocked because she didn't know me that well and you know we're talking over the phone and now i'm asking her to marry me so she said to me she will marry me if it's god's will and i thought oh that's wonderful so all we need to do is we just need to get god to tell her that it is his will and then we can get married so i said to her well why don't we pray about it and get a sign from the lord and she says but how will i get a sign from god what will be a sign to know that this is from god and just being i don't know if it was creative or the holy spirit but i just the first thought that came into my mind was why don't we pray and ask god when we should get mar married and if both of us have the same date then we know that is of god and she said okay she will try so we agreed then that she will pray for a week and i will and then in a week i'll phone her again and then she'll tell me what date she got and i'll tell her what date i got and if it's the same date then that's a confirmation from god that that's when we should get married so a week later i phoned and just be, when i was about to phone i remember but i need to have a date and i was so busy during the week and i clean forgot to get the date so i prayed in tongues for about a minute and as i prayed i just hear the lord speak very clearly to me and he gave me 23 of june so i took a piece of paper and i write it down now remember that's October, the month of October. And so I phoned Claire and we chat a little bit. And she said to me that she was thinking about this date and she thought she doesn't want a, a Saturday wedding. Now, most of our Saturday, our weddings here in South Africa is on a Saturday, but she thought she wants the wedding on a Friday uh, because then she can invite certain of her friends. And she had like this whole plan that she worked out. And I asked her, when is the date that she thought the wedding should be? And then she said, no, she prayed about it and she got a date and she wrote it down and it's a Friday night and she checked on the calendar and uh, she said, but because this is so specific, she rather would want me to say what date I got and then she can see if that's the same one. And so I said to her, okay, I got the 23rd of June. And so when I said it, then she became quiet. And then I say, you're still there? And she says, yes, she's there. And I, I say, what date did you get? And she said, she also got the 23rd of June. And so then on the 23rd of June, the year 2000, me and Claire was married. Uh, and that's this weekend. And so this is our wedding anniversary weekend. And we're celebrating 24 years in marriage. And it was absolutely by divine inspiration. Because even the confirmation was from God. Her name was from God. And and the Lord uh, um, gave so many confirmations about our marriage and about our children. And, you know, the Lord even said to us that we can have five daughters and we ended up having five daughters. So the Lord uh, was good to me. But I went to the Lord in prayer. I asked him and through understanding that gift of understanding to receive vision from the Lord, to understand what is going to happen. I acted in obedience to him 
and he opened up the doors and he gave me favor, especially in the area of my wife and of my children. Now, you might ask the question, what about today? What is happening right now? Well, the Lord showed me, um, I was praying on Monday and the Lord gave me a vision about the next 12 years of what he wanted to do. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I make a covenant with you. I will, over the next 12 years, be obedient to do the things that you've shown me. Uh, And I've written some of them down also. And so I want to encourage you, take time to come before the Lord and allow the Lord to show you a vision for your future and to give you understanding of what He wants you to do. And I want to read you the scripture. I'm going to close with this. 1 Chronicles chapter 12, 32. It says there, The sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. Okay, so there's one of the tribes of Israel. They were called the sons of Issachar, and they had an incredible, unique gifting. And that gifting was they had understanding of the times. So they understood where are they now? Is this the beginning of a season, the end of the season? What what's going to change where is the Lord taking us so they had the understanding of the times and they understood then what to do so they not only just had the vision and the understanding but they even then had the wisdom to listen to the voice of God and to understand this is what the Lord wants us to do and I want to pray for you that the Lord will give you that skill of understanding just like the the angel Gabriel gave to Daniel And that you will have this anointing that was on the sons of Issachar to have understanding of the times and to know what to do. Father, thank you that you are good to us. Lord, thank you that you built today into our lives the foundations of honor, obedience, and understanding. And Lord, I pray now for each one as they listen. Lord, that you will touch them right now and give them the skill of understanding. And Lord, give them the anointing of the sons of Issachar to understand the times and what they should do. And so Lord, I just pray for that impartation into the lives of each one that's listening. Lord, we receive the skill of understanding right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. God love you. You are a winner. And I want to encourage you, walk in honor walk in obedience to the voice of God and walk with that skill of understanding that the Lord is giving you. God bless you.